Good morning all. My name is Uday Bhanu Prakash. Uh, I'm a doctoral graduate research assistant from Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering. I'm doing my PhD under Dr. Shinhua Jia. So it's a part of advanced soil hydrology and physics. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, this is my student lecture. So I hope you guys are doing well in this hard time. So hope we'll be in up soon. So yeah, so in this student lecture, I'd like to give you an overview on groundwater flow modeling using visual mod flow. So visual mod flow is like, uh, it, it includes the outline of this presentation is to give a, 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 a overview on finite difference method, finite difference model followed by uh, visual mod flow, brief introduction about visual mod flow, then uh, showing the groundwater flow modeling in visual mod. Third one, which is like the, the main objectives of this uh, student lecture is to give you an overview and try to uh, explain the, uh, try to show the visual mod flow software and groundwater modeling. The outcomes would be like uh, the, 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 uh, how they derived the partial difference, uh, the partial uh, partial difference equation for finite difference model, and uh, uh, trying to yeah trying to show the visual mod flow. Yeah, I hope no, like, everything will go smoothly. Yeah. So water. So in this nature, water is one of the most precious natural resource, which which is very important for us. So this earth on the on this earth, uh, so we have different regions and different problems. Each region has different climatic conditions. Suppose if you take an arid region, arid region has uh, more population more like uh, the problems are related to water deficit. Like we do, they don't have, like in these regions, uh, water scarcity is one of the like major problem, becoming major problem because from last 15 years, El Nino and La Nino, I, I hope like El Nino and La Nino, which is another topic like which, which deals with the currents and, 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 and other climatic conditions. So with this effect, like we, we don't, uh, in some regions, most of the Asian Asian continent uh, doesn't have proper rains, proper rainfall, and all, which, which leads to redu reduction or decreasing in available water. And so, whereas people are using groundwater as the alternative source, and which, uh, which, which, is, which, is, which is the only alternative, but we don't have any recharge to the groundwater. So obviously the quality and quantity of groundwater will go slow, slowly. So we need to, there is a necessity to model the groundwater flow to, to, to solve, to, 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 at least to know the water availability, to, to, make the, to make the available water properly, to make use them properly. So whereas in some other regions, we have, snowfall and, and groundwater level goes up and downs whereas like so this very necessity for the farmers like farmers are also interested in modeling them to know the groundwater level in their fields so yeah this 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 uh, so we uh, we have certain softwares which which are used for groundwater modeling and all so we are gonna discuss the uh, so these are like kind of uh, three may second. These are the like uh, in like uh, arid regions and all like kind of other other uh, opposite uh, opposite end of like other property. Like if we have more groundwater or less groundwater, what are the problems? And I try to show, uh, differentiate them. So, yeah. Then going back to so we have groundwater we are having groundwater 
flow. Uh, one surface water. We, we say surface, we have surface water, right? So suppose, assume this is a surface water. This is, sorry, assume this is a surface. So water on the surface would, would, would flow, would stay on this. They won't, they will go beyond this, but with very low rate, very low rate, which called as infiltration and all that. So the, the, the uh, soil try to become an impermeable layer, I would say. It's not an impermeable layer, obviously it is permeable layer. So compared to, like, it's, it's kind of, it is reducing the intensity, water intensity in downward direction. That is how water flows on the surface. Water flows on the surface. So, similarly, in the groundwater, in the surface, in the subsurface, if we say this is the like it is the surface, surface, this is subsurface, which, which consists of soil. Yeah, which consists of soil, right? Yeah. So, we would be having a same kind of uh, things to hold the soil inside inside it to hold the soil uh, to hold the water i'm sorry so aquifer so i'm going to i'm going to explain few properties inside the soil which are related to groundwater aquifer first one is a aquifer is a geological energy unit which will store some amount of water or transmit the water which means it will hold or it's kind of it's it's, it's a it's kind of uh, water on the surface. That is how it will hold some water on the surface. Similarly, in, inside the surface, that's what I'm talking about. So this is called aquifer. So usually, uh, groundwater will start building, like will start from the from the aquifers. So then water table. Water table is the uh, we I, I I I'm sure like we are aware of it, right? So water table the 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 upper surface elevation of the groundwater level or what is whatever it is so where its pore water pressure is almost equal to so yeah confining layer it is a geological unit having little or not intrinsic permeability that is what i'm talking about so usually aquifer has a boundary or or, or as a as an impermeable layer which will not allow water to pass through it that is called those are the, the, the layer is called as confined layer usually groundwater will start uh, going together or like i don't say going yeah groundwater will store will start storing on the confined layer slowly it will start water will groundwater level will increase slowly this is the company because it can't go beyond this that is that that, that is called confined layer then comes to types of aquifers we have two types of aquifers uh, unconfined aquifer confined aquifer we have the third one is perched water table which is we get with aquifer also so let's let's see the main points here unconfined unconfined aquifer which or which is like uh, which is uh, most common i'd say yeah so for unconfined aquifer, there, there would be no like uh, no other confined layer above or below it, which says like which has less pressure of water compared to the other. Whereas confined aquifer has two confined layers. In this figure, we can see that. So usually, this is what happens. This is surface water will go. This is the base flow or some some other flows like inside the surface, which would travel through uh, towards the lower elevation. Obviously, ultimately, they will go some, somewhere. So, yeah. So, this is the unconfined aquifer. This is the confining bed. This is the confining bed, which means water may not, it, it, most of the times, if they don't have any leakage, water won't fire pass through it. That is, that is how, like, we call, we call them as impermeable layers, which would uh, block the uh, water movement. This the water in this in, in, on the above single confined layer is called as unconfined aquifer. So this is the surface. This is not unconfined surface. So again, this is confined surface. This is confined surface. Water in this region is called as 
1.5. I mean, the, 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 in the uh, water storage in this region, the whole region is known as aquifer. This whole region. Uh, pressure on aquifer is like a bit higher than the unconfined aquifer. This is because water doesn't have any higher movement. Because water is in pressure because two confined layers are between or uh, the boundaries or acting as a boundary between the water. That is why they 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 they, they have like a higher pressure than the unconfined water in the unconfined aquifer. So we have a third type of aquifer which has which called as leaky leaky aquifer which means like there's there would be leakage or kind of uh, water movement through the confined aquifer. That is special case of confined aquifer. So this figure shows the the, the, the uh, gaining stream some losing stream how the water movement how it's, it's going here it depends on the elevation of the like disconnected stream which is say steadily going yeah these these, these are like i just i just got this picture from internet so let's discuss some uh properties of an aquifer Specific yield, specific retention, retention, storage coefficient, transmissivity, hydraulic conductivity, specific storage. These are some of the important properties of an aquifer, which would say, suppose, assume like, uh, yeah, I'll try to explain that. Specific yield. Yield, obviously, amount of water released from the storage per unit surface area of the aquifer, per unit decline of the water table. Decline of water. This is called specific yield. Amount of water like released from the storage. Then retention, obviously, the name itself is how the how much soil can be against the flow of water, how much water it can hold against the flow of water. That is that is the that is the sort of specific retention. Then storage coefficient, obviously, how much how much amount of water is uh, like stored or absorbed or expelled. Storage per unit. This is called storage. That is that is a store storage ready or storage specific storage. It is the amount of water that was stored in, in per unit mass. I'm sorry, we bad at it. Yeah. Storage per unit mass or volume of equipment. This would say like uh, the storage capacity per unit per unit volume or something. Yeah. Hydraulic connectivity. This is the rate of flow of water. How the water flow in the in the surface. How, uh, assume this as surface. How the water. I, I, I think we are more aware of it, right? We yeah, always all saturated hydraulic connectivity and all, etc., etc. Et yeah. So, yeah. Transmissivity, which is uh, can be transmitted horizontally through a unit. Horizontal horizontal moment is transmissivity, hydraulic conductivity. So we'd say hyper transmittivity T equal to A into B, whereas B is the thickness of the aquifer. Thickness of the aquifer, hydraulic conductivity into thickness of the aquifer. This is the transmissivity. So these are the properties. So usually any groundwater flow. To, to obviously these are very important characteristics or properties to, to to monitor or track the groundwater flow because we need all these properties we need this some of at least some of them are very important to monitor or track the groundwater flow so uh, this is a final governing partial differential equation for visual mod flow which would say like which would explain uh, the hydraulic conductivity in x direction y direction z direction then volumetric flux, then such, uh, so, sorry, specific storage, I'm sorry. Uh, it is a potential, potentiometric head, then time, partial differential equation, which, would try to, which is trying, trying to explain us to the, uh, to the, 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 the water movement in each direction. It's trying to track it. So based on this equation, uh, visual mode flow start up. So before going to the uh, visual mode flow, I'd like to show some, uh, some 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 articles books which worked on which which worked on the uh, uh, partial differential equation. Okay. 
because because uh, I hope you guys are doing after your today's class, like uh, by by discussing about partial differential finite difference method and coherent elemental method. In this class, uh, Dr. Day helped us to understand the uh, the the, the this, this triangular uh, how they solve the equations, how they use the mathematics uh, functions, trans uh, transformations, and all to, to 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 monitor some 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 hydrological properties and all. So I'd like to show few things related to this study. Few things related to. Uh, so this book, uh, I, I, I got two books, like uh, which which are related to almost related to uh, our partial differential equation. So so in this in this book, like they try to explain the groundwater types of groundwater models and finite differential how they uh, calculated the. Uh, uh, they try to sort sort out the equations. I would say this book. If you guys are interested to uh, understand the in deep knowledge, like if you are interested to how uh, in, in, to know the, the the how they solved or uh, sorted out sorted out the partial sorry finite difference model, just uh, I'd suggest this book. And and the other one like simply. Uh, I need to find lecture number 16. Yeah. So in this book, this book is like uh, in one of the chapters, they try to explain the how they ca calculated the uh, how they got the partial differential equation for, for finite difference model. So what they did was like they used a Darcy's Darcy's law, then this this we are aware of it. Now we, we we have solved it, I guess. So, Darcy's uh, law, like v, v equal to QA, they use that. They try to uh, initially they try to make uh, one small mass, known mass cube, to to study the groundwater flow in that in that cube. And they try to enhance to all the all over the area. So in this, they would say like REV, representative element uh, elemental volume, They're like. They try to study the mass balance calculated in the water flow, small volume. So delta x y z is the volume of that's the that that REV representative uh, elemental volume. Then this is the representative elemental volume. It's x y z or the dimensions of that. And they calculate and they, they try to calculate the change in storage, Q in and Q out, discharge in discharge out. So they try to sort it out. Uh, in y direction, y axis, they got, they got this equation. Similarly, x and z axis, they got it. So slowly, they try to they try to include some other properties like uh, conductivity and all. So slowly, slowly, one by one, one by one, one by one property, they're going to key, uh, introduce them. They'll try to make a good equation, beautiful equation. Yeah. So. So this is the final equation. I would say final uh, equation for the uh, final difference equation. That Kx is the hydraulic conductivity, as we discussed in the presentation. That is how they got it. Also, I got a few more articles. On, this is the first partial differential equation, uh, 1910, I believe, Richardson. So this this. Uh, this article will help us if we really wanna be interested in this. This, this article would help us to how how they worked on it. And yeah, an extended formulation of integration. I got some articles, so I'd like to share these articles to to Blackboard. You guys want like just. And sometime go through them. Yeah, coming back to the topic. Yeah, uh, so that that is how they they try to go and get the uh, partial differential equation. So 
So uh, coming to the groundwater flow modeling, before starting to the software, I'd like to explain a few more things. So we need to, to suppose, let, let's discuss what, what are the uh, data we need to do the groundwater modeling. Obviously, we need, a, we need to model the groundwater flow. Let us say we are going to do for far the zone. So we to this could be uh, yeah. So to get the data, we need some 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 uh, data input data to get the groundwater data to get the to get to, complete, to recreate the real conditions like. We need obviously groundwater data. Without groundwater data, it cannot model. Like by by assigning the let, let's start from the very beginning. So to, as, to create a model in the uh, in the in the visual model, well, we need a map, a map with its dimensions, dimensions, like or study area dimensions, dimensions of the study area, study area. It includes length and width. Length and width of the dimensions. It could be in latitude, longitude, or some, you know the, uh, if you wanna do in meters, you're, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, we can, we can do in that manner too. Then after getting the data, Without elevation, we are not going to model because visual model couldn't like get without any reference. It cannot say this is the elevation at this location, this is an elevation at the parking, this is elevation at the main door, this is elevation at the south entrance of the hall door. It doesn't know. So we need to give some reference points. So we need elevation. Elevation in the sense, uh, if we have more elevation, suppose if we say we got two park, uh, like uh, elevation at north entrance and south entrance. If we ask the model to, model will definitely do the integration itself and it will give the, uh, it will allow the elevation. But it could be correct, it could be possibilities, chances are very less. So we need as many as many, as many as locations. Many, at, at, at many locations. getting the elevation what, what are we going to do like we got the elevation then goes to model the groundwater flow we need we need to know the real condition in the field i mean what kind of soil is there how many layers are there how deep it is suppose if clay soil is around 10 centimeter 10 meter deep if it is 10 meter deep then from below the soil clay soil what's there how deep you wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna see how deep the groundwater is. So based on all these conditions, we need to know how many layers in the study area. Layers. In the study area. Things to clay, sandy soil, etc. Clay soil, sandy soil, etc. Then, uh, after getting this, so now we created the, the 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 surface on the model. Now we need we are going to model the groundwater. It means we need some reference values of the existing observation values. So we need groundwater water data could be from observation wells. Piezometers, etc. How, how much data you need? As much as we can. If we have more data, the more accurately we can try to replicate the real condition. So that is how we need. So what else we need? Obviously, if we have groundwater wells, it's like it's not like only input. There will be some output. So 
there should be some uh, wells, pumping wells in the Fagodom. So we are going to say, if not in Fagodoms, usually some countries use the pumping wells to ex use the groundwater. So yeah, that's what I mean. So usually we will we'll be needing like pumping wells because if we don't have the pumping wells, that's fine. If we don't have pumping wells in real condition, that's fine. But if we have pumping well data, and if you are not going to assign them in the model, then obviously there, there will be like possibility of, we are not going to real, create real conditions. It means like, obviously we need at least, we should get, try our level best to find the pumping wells and get the data. How much data we need? Obviously, yes. How long, like as much as you can, yeah. Then after the pumping wells, what, are, what do we need? So we need the properties properties of the layers like hydraulic conductivity specific storage total porosity etc total porosity 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 uh, these are the these are the important functions properties yeah these are the important properties which are which we need to know also we need the layer thickness too. Number of layers. Number of layers. And thickness of each layer. Thickness of each layer. These also, these are like a bit important for our model. So after getting the pumping wells, we need to assign the support. Now we are almost about to do. So now we need uh, rivers, like surface water boundaries, boundary conditions we need to do. If you have a, a sea or ocean, say river, drainage canals, some kind of boundary conditions, boundary conditions. Boundary conditions like C, which would say like uh, zero head, constant head, we'd say, yeah. constant head. It comes under uh, ocean of C, yeah. C would be like zero is the mean sea level, right? That's what I mean. And rivers, you can assign them. Canals. Mean drainage canals, drain canals. I mean, you cannot start smaller one. We are going like we are going which would have the things which would have impact on the groundwater. That those are all like things we need. To do. Then, what else we need? We need to know the evapotranspiration if we are going to do in the field. Evapotranspiration, average evapotranspiration. How much data we need? How much we can? Specific story like uh, then recharge. Recharge is the rainfall. We have rainfall, right? So we'd say, uh, I uh, say usually if we don't know how much recharge, we'd say 10% of the rainfall, annual rainfall. These are like 10% of the rainfall. I believe I, I, I try to explain almost all. The, the inputs for the model. Without these, it would be, I don't think, uh, model would be complete. So we need at least as much as data we can, as much as properties we can in the model. This would help us to make the, uh, run the model better. So yeah, so coming to the properties, yeah, coming to the model, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, start a new video in the, to explain the model because uh, it's yeah, it, it would it would stop automatically after 45 minutes. So I don't wanna disturb you. Yeah. So uh, I'll try to share almost all like uh, the files 
along with these videos. If you guys are interested, please, uh, please just uh, go through them. If you have any doubts, please mail me. If I can, I'll try to solve it. If I don't, I will I will request after day or like other sources to help you. Thanks a lot. See you in my next video.